Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Village of Mamaroneck residents. If you are not a Village of Mamaroneck resident, this is not going to be of interest to you. This is not about the banks or Musk Twitter. This is just for my community. So uh, if you're watching and you don't live locally, uh, you're welcome to stay, but this won't be of interest to you. So we are going, dear Village of Mamaroneck residents, what I'm gonna to try to do is give a very basic overview of how you can look at three things. We're gonna talk about our operating budget, which we will be discussing at the Board of Trustee meeting Monday. I'm gonna start where we're gonna end, and that is the next Board of Trustee meetings is Monday, March 27th at 8 p.m. at the courthouse right next to the police station, 169 Pleasant Street. Please all attend if you can. So we're gonna be talking about the operating budget, the five-year uh, capital plan, and the wow. new contract given to the village manager. And I'm just going to try to lay this out as if you are a um, generic household manager, managing your own personal budget. Try to translate the operating budget and the five-year budget into what it would look like for you as a regular person. So the operating budget, which is what we're going to be talking about at the Monday meeting, is the revenue and expenses of our village. And if you want to think of that as a homeowner, and I apologize for Arlene in the background, uh, if you want to think of that as a homeowner, every month you get a paycheck, and every month you have to pay for things like your electricity, uh, your gas, your food, your rent or your mortgage, uh, not your rent, if you have to pay for your rent. Those are sort of your, the way to think of an operating budget. It's your money coming in and what you need to put back out. The five-year capital plan, which we're also going to discuss, is something different. Those are bonds, which is the equivalent of, say, a loan. Say you took out a loan to buy your home. Say you took out a loan to buy your car. Uh, those are things in your operating budget that show up each month. You know, you get a statement from your car finance company or from your mortgage broker, mortgage company that you have to pay. That's principal and interest. That is separate. Okay, if you didn't have a car loan or you didn't have a home loan, then you wouldn't be paying those. So those are not part of the operating budget. Those are part of this sort of five-year capital plan as a way to think about them. So two separate concepts. The operating budget, which we're going to be discussing on Monday at the Board of Trustee meeting, I'm gonna post links for all of these after I'm done as comments, so you'll be able to pick them all up. But this is the cover of what it looks like. I'm gonna post the link for it. It's a 2023 to 2024 capital, this is called the operating budget, or it's called tentative because it is still tentative, and that's why I'm encouraging everyone to show up. Now, if you have this opened, uh, it's a 300 plus page document, but if you have it opened or you have it at home, a few pages in, there's a chart that looks like this. And I, I made it a little bit smaller so you can hopefully read it, but if not, this is where we're gonna start. Because this is in concept, this is a, an overview for the last few years of what our budget has been, okay? So here's the top line. This is the, again, this is the proposed budget for this year. Then the last few years, I've just cut this chart in half to make it a little small, a bigger so you can read it. For some reason they don't have, I just noticed uh, 2020 to 2021. I'm not sure why that's not included, but we're just gonna work around that. It's, it's not in the package. But this is important, okay? And I'm getting these numbers. I'm gonna also go through the math of how I got this. For our total budget, this year, the proposed total budget is 44,754,000 and change. That's last year's budget, 
was 41,576. So we've gone up about 3.2 million in this proposed budget, or about 8%. Let me just give you how you do the math. This is the math. This is how you get the percent increase. If you want to take out your calculator and do it after we're done with this session at home. This is this year's 2023-2024 proposed budget. This is last year's budget, 41,576,000. The difference is just under 3.2 million. You take that number, the difference, the 3.2 million divided by the last year's budget because it's a growth over last year, it's about an 8% increase. So how does that compare to other years? Last time, from 2021, 22 to 22, 23, our budget increased by 5%. So it's greater than that. The year before, again, I don't have data for that because for some reason they didn't put that in the chart. But when we went from 2018-19 to 19-20, our budget went up by only 4%. The year before, it went up only 3%. In 2016-17 to 17-18, it went up only 1%. Again, this is all in this chart right here. You can find it. I'm going to post the link after. But you can see what they're proposing this year is a huge jump compared to what our village usually can expect in our operating budget. Uh, and so what does that mean? Well, part of what our village manager writes in his introducing the budget is we're counting on strong revenue this year and a strong economy. Um, as someone who worked and is now currently working in finance and a lot of people in our community are involved in the finance world, uh, I, I don't really know anyone who believes this is going to be a strong economic year. We are probably going into a recession if we're not in one already. And it's just a question now of how severe that recession will be and whether it has started already or is about to start. So that, again, if, if you're concerned about our budget as, as taxpayers, and we're going to get to that next, you should be concerned about this. And as you are running your home budget, I assume that you as well are concerned about how much you're traveling and how much extra money you're spending because uh, we are heading into a tougher time for our economy. So that's our budget, this 44.76. So how do we fund that? The revenue side, about two-thirds of it comes from property taxes. That's the tax bill you get from the village. So this is the operating budget. Again, I'm going to put up the link, but how they're getting to the $44 million. They're assuming a property tax of about just under $28 million, non-property tax of 16.3, and then this number, which we've done for a couple of years I'm from looking at old budgets, about $600,000 that we're borrowing from ourselves, essentially, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. This is money that goes into a reserve account that we're drawing out. We have to replenish it after, but that too is part of our budget. This number here is a number I'm concerned about because this number, which is you know, parking fees, other fees that we charge as a village for revenue, uh, yeah, again, when you park, when you ask for permits, uh, other things, there's a, it's all mentioned in this budget. You can read about the village manager is, is assuming big growth in this number and a strong economy in order to get to this number. And in this number that we see here, okay, now I'm going to go back and do property taxes. 23 to 24 in, in this budget, they're assuming that out of this bigger number, this 44.8 million of, of expenditures we have, they're assuming that only 62% of that is going to come from property taxes. Why? Because again, as I mentioned, the assumption of the village manager is we're going to grow all these other, this other revenue. This 16 million number is going to be much larger and it's going to be able to absorb the rest. Again, if you're looking at this chart, the number is, this is the number that is the number of, of the amount of taxes we're paying. So the math is, this 27, 
839 number divided by the total budget. So this year, the assumption is only 62% of the budget needs to come from property taxes. So how does that compare with prior years? These are actual numbers. Last year, 66% came from property taxes. The year before, 68% came from property taxes. Again, for some reason, 2020 to 2021 are not on there, but going back two more years, 69% and 70% of our total budget came from us, from us paying property taxes. So just like, let's assume that instead of it being 62%, it's somewhere closer to what it's been traditionally. In that case, what if our property taxes were at 68%? In that case, the total budget times 0.68 would be property taxes of 30.4 million, which means an 11% increase for property tax. And that might be the more logical scenario. Again, there's an old saying on Wall Street, guy go, garbage in, garbage out. In order to get this bigger budget covered, we are assuming a huge increase in other revenue for the village. If that does not come through, it will come from us as paying property tax. So again, that's just something to be concerned about. When you see this kind of growth of 8% at a time when we're going into a recession versus what it traditionally has been, um, that is cause for alarm. And I'm just giving an overview. I'm not gonna go into the details. Again, if you wanna go into the details, I'm gonna post the link. You can see where all of the money is going, how it's being spent. Now, the second topic we're going to talk about, and this is an overview, is the capital budget. Let me lay the table here a little bit. This is separate than the operating budget. Remember, the operating budget is like your, how you manage your house each month. You get your paycheck, you put it in your bank, each, you write your checks off your bank for food, for the Con Ed bill, for your telephone, for your cell phone. That's your operating budget comparison. This capital budget that we're going to talk about next is as if you buy a house or you buy a car and you take a loan on the money. That's the equivalent. It's like a bond. This is a bond, is like a loan. So what have we traditionally done as a village? Historically, when we've bonded each year, it's been under $10 million. We have to pay those back, they're municipal bonds, we pay them back, we pay interest and principal. How that flows in, it's the same thing as your budget. You get your paycheck, if you have a home loan, if you have a car loan, each month you pay principal and interest out of your budget. So the way it, this number flows back in through the first number we talked about is the principal and interest that is part of our operating budget. So historically, it's been under 10 million. There was one year, several years ago, where we did a $13 million plus bond for the library. That's not part of our operating budget. That shows up if you have your village bill. This is what it looks like. When you get your annual village bill, there's a line that is the village tax. And there's a separate line that says library district on your bill. You can pull it out after and, and check it out. Last year, these went up 2%. Um, what this covers, where it says library district, is the principal and interest for that $13 million we borrowed to redo the library, plus their operating expense. I know there's separate issues with the library right now. I'm not including that in this, but I just want you to be aware uh, as, a, as a resident in the village of Mamaroneck, if you are a homeowner especially, um, this is a, a pretty sizable amount you're paying each year. But that's paying the principal and interest, uh, and that is also paying the capital expenditures. It's something we voted on and, and agreed to as residents, but it is on your bill. It doesn't flow through the operating budget. It's a separate line item on your bill. So up, um, up until 2023, other than the money that we 
bonded each year. That library, which was separate and a big deal at the time, there were several presentations about it. Uh, there were six million raised above what we did from, from individuals that were in the community. But there were multiple presentations to residents about the library, what it would entail, how it would be paid for, et cetera. Uh, here's one I didn't even know, and I suspect many of you didn't know. In February, like last month, we issued 14 and a half million of bonds. To my knowledge, and again, I've, I, this is according to people in the budget committee I've spoken to, I have not been involved a long time in looking at these numbers closely. That was our biggest expenditure on a bond. I, I don't know what it's for. I don't know how we are repaying it, but we did issue this bond last month. There was no meeting to explain what it was for. Uh, we will be, I assume, paying it back. I don't think it's showing up as a separate line. I don't know if it's rolled into our water bill or our sewage bill, which we'll talk about next. Uh, but but currently outstanding we have in total, this is our outstanding debt for the village, is roughly 56 million. Now this capital plan that was proposed in front of the board, um, not much public information given out, would add an additional 113 million. Uh, I'm going to post a link to what the plan is for. Again, this is a wish list. It hasn't all been approved, but um, there's line items. Some of it will be able to get grants for or get rebates from the state or whatever. It's, it's sort of a work in progress. I'll send you all the link. You can look at it too. But the key thing and the takeaway is these numbers are astronomical. And these are the proposed numbers in this five-year plan. They total another 113 million. This is again on top of the 56 million we have outstanding. Um, so again, that's something that's I assume is going to be explained to residents. Uh, there's been very little mention of it. I brought it up once and was attacked for bringing it up. And I apologize, it wasn't 112, it's actually 113. Here's the actual numbers. Uh, but I'm going to post that, and you can see all the things that uh, have been proposed. This is, it's sort of a wish list, so not all of these things will be granted, but you can start to see at a time when we're probably going into recession, these are pretty scary numbers. Um, now, the final thing I just wanted to talk about is the village manager's contract. Uh, and again, if, if you're, I see a lot of faces that don't live in Mamaroneck tuning in. Hi, you're all welcome to listen, but this is just specific to our village. This is not the normal teach-ins. So um, a lot of us showed up a week ago Monday to the last BOT meeting. Uh, we, some of us showed up on the Friday when there was an emergency session and the village manager's contract was extended. We did not know what those terms were. Um, thanks to a FOIL request by a local resident, as well as a reporter who's now written about this twice, David Wilson at the Journal News, Low HUD. Now we know what these numbers are, so I'm just going to talk about these numbers and put them into some sort of context as well. These are part of our budget. So uh, this is these are pages, again, from the, his contract that I will post. We didn't know about these last Monday, but we'll know ahead of this next meeting. Uh, these are the, his salary for the next, for this year, which was an increase already over what he was making. His contract would have come up in January 2024. Um, I'm adding back the 8,500, and you can see why, because he's getting an additional 8,500 in annual compensation. And if you saw the articles in the Journal News, you saw that uh, David went, said his current salary is about 244000 goes up to 273000 over the term of his contract. Um, and that's because it's, again, this number plus 8500 To put this in some context, uh, Governor Hochul makes $225,000. Uh, our village manager is now the highest paid village manager in all of Westchester. We have 19,000 people in the village. The village manager of Portchester makes under $200,000. Many village managers make under $200,000. This is what our village manager is making. 
And I want to add, and this is part of the contract that I'm going to post, he is working at our village part-time. Um, so he has another job in New Jersey that I, I gather he commutes according to uh, the LOHAD reporting back and forth to do both jobs, but this is part-time uh, work with our village. There's been some questions whether, I guess, he has an apartment at the Avalon, it said in the reporting, where he actually lives. This is just, again, a page. Some people have asked about his transportation and whatnot. I'm just going to read to you from his contract. Automobile. The manager's duties require that he shall have use of a vehicle provided to him by the village for village business and local travel and from the manager's residence from his residence. He wouldn't need a vehicle if it was coming from the Avalon. It's what, like you can throw a stone away? So I assume it's an undefined term that his residence means that we are paying for him to drive back and forth to his other job in New Jersey. The village shall be responsible for paying liability, property damage and comprehensive insurance and for purchase, operation, maintenance, fuel, repair and necessary replacement of said vehicle. So um, I just wanted to add that into, th this is an added benefit in addition to this. I want to also point out that there was a resolution passed in our Board of Trustees uh, in January for raises. These were raises that the village manager put through and were approved. Um, the first two lines, I'm going to post this as well. The first two lines are for the deputy village manager and for the secretary, the village manager's secretary. They both got big raises. The deputy village manager got a 17% raise. The secretary got a 14% raise. They probably deserve this because they're doing much more work since he's working part-time and has another job. Um, these numbers are for four months but on an annualized basis, you would multiply this number by four. This is an extra $636,000 to our operating budget in total. But net, net, we are paying an extra $36,000 to these two employees for basically backing up our village manager in addition to his contract. Um, pretty stunning number. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to post all these links um, I, I would encourage you all to kind of read through. You can use what I'm explaining here as sort of a context of how to examine it. And again, the next meeting where we're going to be discussing the operating budget is Monday, March 27th at 8 p.m. Uh, but again, the things to review, this packet is what we'll be discussing Monday. This is the packet where we're seeing an 8% jump in our operating budget. Again, that is separate from, and probably we'll have a discussion on a different day, the proposed 113 million of bonds. I want to mention one other thing. There was, at the last meeting, voted on an additional line that you're going to see when you get your water bill for storage. What we are basically doing is putting part of the pay for our village manager, our deputy village manager and some employees into that line. So that storage line is going to get bigger when you get your next, your upcoming bills because we're reallocating part of the operating budget to those bills. So I just want to make everyone aware that whether you're paying it through property tax, whether you're paying it through in the case of the library, it flows through here, whether it's an increase in your water charge or an increase of your sewage charge, these are all ways you as residents are paying for what is becoming an increasingly bloated operating budget. Um, so with that, I'm going to download this, put this on YouTube for people that are not on Facebook. If you have questions that you would like to leave, leave them as comments and I'll do my best to answer them. This is meant to just be an overview of the basics. I don't know the detail because you will need to hear from the department heads and the village manager to give you more detail. And if you'd like to hear that, please show up next Monday. Thank you.